Hey everybody, welcome back. Let's jump right into an update on my Kit Fox project. Stick around till the end of the video because I got some pretty cool things to show you towards the end. Coming right up. All right, up first is the elevator trim wire. I installed these connectors on the wire and I wanted to get this wire run through the fuselage to the back of the airplane. Now, if you're going to do any wiring on your airplane, I do recommend you get the proper tools. I get most of mine from Steinair, and I'll put a link in the description box below to some of the tools that you're going to want to get. Okay, step one for me was to install this piece of heat shrink over the gray cable that will get uh, used later. And very lightly, I went around the perimeter of the gray cable just to take off the outside gray part. But you want to be very careful not to cut into the two wires that are on the inside of this cable. Once I cut around the edge, I just use these little uh, side cutters to kind of finish going through the outside casing. And then to slice up through lengthwise to be able to pull off the gray part. Once inside, you're going to see a red wire and a black wire. Strip those with the proper wire strippers, which I'm using right here. And again, I'll put a link below uh, to Steiner if you want to buy one of these. But it's really nice and really handy, and it does an awesome job of stripping the wire. And here, I'm just trying to get an angle in the camera so you can see how it works. It just takes off a perfect slice at the end. And then I fit these little metal parts on. And I guess I didn't film the next step, which is actually crimping these on. But again, use the proper crimping tools and they work really nice. But well, once you have them crimped, you just slide on the nylon outer part until they kind of click into place. And it makes for a real nice connector. After that's on, then I'll slide up that yellow heat shrink that I put on just to kind of clean up where the wires come out, give it a little bit of extra strength and support. Well, after the connector is put on the wire, I ran it through the back of the fuselage to the elevator trim motor. And it's a lot easier to do this now before the fabric covering is on the fuselage. So the wire is coming off the motor. Obviously you're gonna need a connector to connect to the gray wire. So I'm putting the opposite end of that connector onto the motor wires. And it's done the same way. These are the two motor wires here. I have the two silver connectors crimped on. You push on the outside connector. And by the way, these are Molex connectors. There's an electronics shop kind of sort of near my house where I buy these, but I'm sure you can get them online just about anywhere. So now that the connector's on, I can connect them together. And later on, I guess I will figure out exactly how to secure the wire through the fuselage. I also wanted to put in the seat pan so I can see what kind of room I have to run the wires up front. Now, in order to avoid scratching the paint, I temporarily put this blue masking tape down over the painted tubes. I did this on the, the bottom tubes and in the top tubes where the seat will uh, you know, rest on the tubes. And over the masking tape, I put the masking tape on first because it's a low stick tape and it'll be easy to peel off. But obviously, obviously it's not a very strong tape. So over the blue masking tape, I put on this one inch wide duct tape. And that's what kind of gives the strength or the resistance to scratching the paint. And then since there's blue tape under it, it'll be easier to peel off later. I'm not sure what kind of trimming was already done on this or if this is how it comes from the factory because I did buy this kit used but the uh, seat pan fit real nice into the fuselage. Mm -hmm. 
Well, this seat pan has been sitting in my garage for a year and then my buddy's hanger for years before that. So it's pretty nasty. It was really dirty. There's dead bugs and dead spiders all over it. So I uh, vacuumed it off with a shop vac, vacuumed out these little storage compartments. And then once that was done, I used a, a bucket of soapy water with a rag and cleaned the rest of it off. Now from the bottom, I can see what kind of space I have to run wires under the seat pan and back to the antennas and the elevator trim. The next task I wanted to get done was get the comm antenna mounted. This is obviously the plate that the comm antenna gets mounted on. And I'm putting the tape down for two reasons. One is just to not scratch the powder coating. But mostly I'm using the tape here because I want to draw a center line and then I want to mark where the holes are going to get drilled. And I don't really want to draw on the white powder coating. So it's easier just to draw on the tape and then drill the holes and then remove the tape. So I put two little marks where the center of that plate is. And then I use a straight edge here just to draw a straight line on the tape. All right, I know my hands are kind of blocking what I'm doing here, but when you get the antenna, it comes with a little gasket which has all the holes and everything in it. So I'm just using that gasket to center on this, the center line and then just tracing a box on the inside, which I'll show you in just a second, and then also the holes for mounting the antenna. And by the way, if you guys don't have these orange rubber mats from Grip Mat, Go over there and buy one. These things are so handy for working on the airplanes and they have a deal set up with me with the YouTube channel. If you use the discount code KITPLANE10, you will get a 10% discount on your first order. Okay, the round part you see here is where the BNC connector goes from the antenna. So that's where I'm gonna draw or drill the first hole. So I'll use a drill bit just to drill a pilot hole through the steel plate. And then after I drill the, the pilot hole, I'll switch to a unibit and drill it big enough for the BNC connector to fit through that's on the bottom of the antenna. Once that hole is drilled, I put that gasket back on there to mark the location of the four holes drilled the four holes and test fit with the antenna fits great looks great moving on to the rudder pedals I am putting some non-slip uh, tape stuff on the front of the pedals so I'm just measuring the front surface so I can cut that out and stick it to the rudder pedal so I've used three inches by four and a quarter for my pedals. This is the rubberized non-slip stuff that I'm putting on. I bought it on Amazon. If I can find it again, I'll put a link in the description box. It's really nice stuff. But once I got the measurements here, I just drew some lines on the back, the, the three inches by four and a quarter with the Sharpie here. And then simply just cut it out with a pair of shears. you can see what it looks like it's just a nice little square or rectangle that will fit on the pedal now I also like to take each corner and round it because if you leave it a 90 degree corner it's more likely to get caught on your foot or something and catch and start to peel off plus it just looks a lot nicer and more finished with the corners rounded Now the fun part is sticking it on the rudder pedals, just like putting any decals on an airplane. Peel off the back and carefully place it on the rudder pedal. Here is what it looks like stuck to the pedal on the left. The right side is not done yet. And it's real nice for keeping your feet securely attached to the rudder pedal. One other quick little thing I did was I just riveted on these clips to the flap and aileron mixer tube all right now for the more fun stuff when i build an airplane i really like to have some paint schemes in mind 
And one of the first ones I came up with for the Kit Fox was this NASA themed scheme. It's simple, but I like it. It looks sharp. I see this scheme on a, I think it's a Cirrus that NASA has at Oshkosh every year, and I really like it, so I thought it would look cool on the Kit Fox. I wanted to try some other schemes, though. I saw this scheme on another airplane and just thought I'd put it on the Kit Fox to see how it looks. I like it. I also thought the scheme that you see on the Pitts biplanes would look good on the Kit Fox, so here it is here. But what I really like is the military scheme. So I've, came, I've come up with this kind of fictional army paint scheme. And I did it with the back half in white just because I think it looks cool. And I think I've seen this scheme on another airplane before. And then after I did that one, I thought it might be neat to change the colors on the tail. So I did it yellow and I did one red and I did one orange, and then the orange really hit me. I think the orange really looks cool with the green. It really just looks military. So on this version, I just added the, the different landing gear. It has the, uh, instead of the, the aluminum gear, it's got the other gear with the big shocks on it, so it looks cool. So what do you think? I could picture flying this around on some riverbed out in Arizona or Nevada or something like that. We'll see. I got lots of time to decide on the paint scheme, but so far I'm liking this one.